afterwards, though. They may oh, that's not true. That's true. come on live, but I think we get a couple hundred afterwards, at least. They may not watch till the very end, though. Truth, truth. All right. Know. Mark, how do you feel about that? Not so keen on that. Okay, we're not doing it then. <laughs> it, I just, we are live. Get started here in just a few moments. Thanks everybody for tuning in so far. Um, while you're waiting for us to get started, let us know where you're watching from this morning by writing where you're at in the comments down below. Nobody watching us. Go ahead. I see four. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, four. I had friends texting last night and I told them I had to go because I had to be Kelly Ripa in the morning with live. <laughs> <laughs> live. Harry Morris is watching. Hey, Perry. Thanks for watching, Perry. Yay, go Perry. <laughs> Get started here in about one minute. Harry and I both have June birthdays. So you're the best. <laughs> it's July now. How weird is that? Oh, honey, I did. Uh, yeah, that is weird, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it feels like it was just March. <laughs> I know. Appropriate to the to the theme of of this uh, Facebook Live. Right. <laughs> feels, like it, feels like it was just March. John yeah. Garvey right John Garvey writes in, but it's in French. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I was, I don't know what photo photo. I don't know what photo photo means. Well, isn't there like a Google, Can't you just do the translate like below? Yeah, not well, not on the live thing. I don't know how to do that. Corey is watching from Lincoln. Thanks for watching, Corey. And Susan, uh, Susan's watching. Thanks for tuning in. Don also said, uh, June is over. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much March, April, <laughs> May, June is over. Let it go, right? In the, words, in the words of Elsa, let it go. All one month. <laughs> Boy, he's in a mood. He also said we're very cosmopolitan here, meaning he wrote something in French in the comments. Wait, what? What did he say? He said we're very cosmopolitan here. Meaning him, not us. Yes. <laughs> that's what All right, let's get this uh let's get this road on the show. The show on the I road. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, Okay, well, thanks everybody for tuning in this morning. Um, if you haven't done so already, let us know where you're watching from today uh, by writing it down in the comments. Uh, had a few folks write in already. Uh, John, Perry, uh, Corey, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, I'm streaming live from the museum. I'm the only one here right now. So, um, and then my other, my other um, guests on the program today are also streaming live from Champaign County. Let's see who is with us today. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. My name is Pat Kane. I'm the Public Programs Visitor Services Coordinator at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Barb, how about you? I'm Barb Garvey. I'm the uh, Director of the Museum and Education Department at the Champaign County Forest Preserve District and have uh, responsibility over the museum and its staff primarily but I also oversee people out at Homer Lake Interpretive Center in a more remote way, obviously. And I'm talking to you from 
my home in downtown Champaign. Thanks, Barb. Uh, Katie, what about you? I am Katie Snyder. I'm here in Urbana. I'm the education program specialist at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, which is part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. And thank you, Katie. Mark, how about you? Morning, I'm Mark Hansen. I'm the curator for the Museum of the Grand Prairie and I'm up in Rantoul. So all parts of Champaign County, many parts of Champaign County covered just by the four of us today. But um, uh, here in a few moments, we're gonna talk about the museum reopening. We will reopen on a limited basis one week from today. What exactly will that look like? Well, we will fill you in on, on uh, all the details, as I mentioned here in just a few moments. If you have any questions for us, uh, we love when you write in questions. It makes this a lot more engaging and fun for you and us. Feel free to write those down below in the comment section. Questions about us reopening, if you have questions about uh, local history topics, anything at all, please write those questions down below. We would love to answer those live during this program. Uh, a few things uh, coming up in the near future that we're working on and some ongoing projects. Um, so uh, as they have been since the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, began, CCFPD areas are still open for you to explore. Six beautiful forest preserves throughout Champaign County. Explore the trails, explore the outdoors if you can, but please maintain a safe social distance and we strongly recommend that you wear a mask while outdoors as the summer months get quite busy out at the Champaign County Forest Preserves. Um, uh, some other things we're working on, working on a whole bunch of digital content uh, over the past couple of months since we, are not, since we haven't been open um, and working on some things currently too. Uh, Katie, did you want to talk about uh, some virtual summer camp videos, camp in a bag, and collaboration you're working on as well? Sure. So um, for virtual summer camps, what we're doing is a couple of times a week, we are um, doing Facebook videos about Grand Prairie Kids Create and also our garden programs. So our educators, uh, Ms. Sandy, is doing Grand Prairie Kids, and it's really interesting to me what Ms. Sandy is coming up with because she's going out to different iconic spots throughout the gardens and throughout the museum, and it, it, it's just, I think people are really enjoying that. Um, and Ms. Marina is doing more kind of like a how-to of garden activities that you can do with things that you find in your own backyard and in your own house commonly found items. So we're doing that. We also have videos that are um, have gone out to libraries throughout Champaign County and those are more exclusive to the libraries. So watch what uh, when your local library advertises something. Miss Sandy did a couple of schoolhouse ones and Miss Marina did something about uh, seeds called Seed Safari. Um, camp in a bag is coming up. We, um, Stacy out at Homer Lake has already got one up and going called, I'm sorry, I always forget what it's called, what's it called? Wildlife Park. Adventures. Yeah, so I think you can go on um, Champaign County Forest Preserve website, um, just like you were signing up for a program and you can sign up for one of those. We at the museum will very soon be launching one about old-fashioned toys called what do we call it Barb? Uh, old-fashioned I think it's old. <laughs> something, something about um, toys. It's about old-fashioned toys. It's about old-fashioned <laughs> toys. I don't remember the name of it um, but in that you'll get like three possibly four different old-fashioned toys. You'll get some instructions how to make and play some other old-fashioned games and it all comes in a really nice uh, one of those drawstring Champaign County Forest Preserve bags. So it's a really great deal. And we're offering that for only $10. And I think you could get a lot of play time inside, outside, play time away from screens um, for that one. We're also tomorrow, actually, it's tomorrow already, right? Tomorrow we're doing um, a collaboration with Urbana Free Library where um, we're doing a program called from Victory Gardens to Solidarity Gardens. And it's in cooperation with a whole bunch of different agencies in Champaign County that are doing um, Solidarity Gardens to help people share food, to help folks that are food insecure. And the museum has done the historical perspective on that. So there's a lot going on. Oh yeah, lots and lots of 
digital content, lots of things to do, to watch, uh, to even, you know, get in the camp, camp in a bag to, you know, take home uh, as well too. Um, so uh, check those out, uh, you know, especially that program that's coming up uh, tomorrow too. The pro it's snuck up on us. Um, I felt like July 2nd didn't see, it, see, it seemed farther away when we started I know. At it initially, but it's tomorrow. Um, also over, doing, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also doing um, Museum Monday programs each Monday in the summer, live on our Facebook page. And we're also going to um, every Friday in July, beginning uh, next Friday, July 10th, we'll have our popular Summer in the Schoolhouse programs where we have uh, three different school marms um, on four Fridays who are going to put on some great 19th century schoolhouse lessons virtually for the first time um, uh, out in our schoolhouse. So stay tuned for all of that. Check out all the other digital uh, content that's on our Facebook page, local history stories, oral history clips from our museum's collection, um, uh, pieces from uh, artifacts from our museum's collection, other events and things we're working on. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Goodreads. One last thing I wanted to promote, uh, got another program in our exhibit speaker series tied to our newest, newest exhibit right behind me, How Long Must Women Wait, Women's Suffrage, and Women's Rights in Champaign County. A virtual program happening live on our Facebook page on the afternoon of July 19th, Sunday, July 19th, where uh, singer, songwriter, historian Kristen Lems is going to present the program titled Songs and Stories of the Women's Movement in Champaign-Urbana from 1973 to 1983. So that should be a pretty great program. Looking forward to that. Tune into that program again on Sunday, July 19th in the afternoon. Okay, let's get into uh, today's program. Um, so again, feel free to ask us any questions down below. We're going to talk about what the museum will look like once we reopen. How do you sign up to come visit? All of the details associated with that. Uh, we love the questions that you ask, so write those down below. Feel free to share the stream again so this gets broadcast as far and as wide as possible. Um, and let's talk about the museum reopening. Barb, did you want to give a general overview of uh, what, you know, what, uh, what we will require of guests and patrons um, when coming to the museum uh, once we reopen on a limited basis next week. Sure. Um, so, you know, uh, we're using both the advice of the Public Health District and the governor who has actually put out guidelines related to museums. The governor has not allowed museums to be open until um, phase four, and now we're in phase four, so we're going to reopen very slowly because we it's a, there's a lot of things we, we're required to do. One of the things we're required to do is required to ask everyone who enters the museum to wear a mask. Um, so that will be required if you're going to come to the museum. Um, and we have lots of uh, online opportunities if you can't w wear a mask. So that's where we would direct you if uh, you can't if you can't possibly wear a mask. Um, we also are going to require social distancing within your unit um, when you're in the museum. So you have to if you're a family and there's another family in the museum at the same time, you have to stay six feet away from them. You have to stay six feet away from each other because presumably you've been together. <laughs> um, we will uh, ask everybody to um, hand sanitize their hands as soon as they come in the building. We'll provide hand sanitizer throughout the building in case you need to touch something. Um, there, of course, there are railings in the museum that you might end up touching or there are a few interactives that will be left. Unfortunately, one of the governor's recommendations is to take out all the interactives. And of course, we want to do that so that everybody stays healthy. Um, there are a few that we can't, we just can't possibly remove. So if we leave them and you touch them, you'll have to sanitize your hands. Um, and then uh, similarly with the restroom, we'll be having sanitizer there and pretty much, and not touch everything after you've exited the, the bathroom. So, I mean, you should be pretty safe and we will have done what we are required to do. So 
I know it seems very restrictive and it's painful to us too, believe me. Cause, cause all this for, for generations, we've been engaging people with things to touch and things to, to interact with in order to feel more a part of history. And it's really, it's really tough to have to take those things out, but it's for everybody's safety. Uh, the other thing that will happen is that for the time being, the Discovery, uh, Discovering Home exhibit will be completely closed. Um, so, because there's just, everything is touching there. So it just doesn't make any sense to even open it. Um, and we are watching what the uh, Museum Association, both locally in the Midwest and nationally are saying about interactive. So if, you know, there should come a day when it seems like it's okay to touch things, they'll be back. But right now we're going slowly. Uh, one thing that we will also be doing that I'm gonna let Pat give us the details on is requiring you to sign up to come to the museum and you will have to leave contact information because if we should have to um, con contact you, should someone else who came to the museum have COVID, that um, we will need to have your contact information. That will happen by registration. Um, and Pat's gonna tell you how to register. Uh, we'll be open on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays this month. We may expand that. We'll see how it goes. What did I miss? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think too much. You know, the, the big ones, you know, got to wear a mask to get in, has to stay on the entire time you're inside, stay six feet apart, use hand sanitizer when you walk in, as well as any other time you touch stuff. Um, and yeah, got to sign up to come. Uh, come on out. And so this is the most fun thing to have to do today is tell you all the rules, you know? I just love being that <laughs> the rule giver. <laughs> Not yeah. at all, <laughs> but it's got to happen. Sorry. Yep, just doing it to you know make sure that uh, everybody. we yeah. keep, we keep everybody safe. You know, visitors, staff, um, everyone. Um, well, thanks, Barb. Um, Mark, okay. anything else to add? I know I know Barb touched on it already, but anything else to add about what's different about exhibits and and why we made those changes? Yeah, just to sort of piggyback on what Barb said, um, unfortunately, interactives um, are a little dodgy right now with, with COVID. Um, we'll also be uh, working on some traffic flow patterns with some floor signage uh, just to help sort of um, make it easier for people to stay social distanced. We'll have some signage on the floor that sort of uh, reestablishes what six feet looks like um, and hopefully make it as easy as possible for folks to stay safe uh, but still enjoy the museum. There's still a lot of things to see. Um, you know, even though those interactive things are, are fun, kind of the story and the history is still there for people to explore and enjoy. You know, Pat, something we uh, haven't mentioned is that our, our sister facility, the Homer Lake Interpretive Center, will also be opening next Wednesday, the 6th of July. Um, they have slightly different rules. Um, their rules will be that you must wear a mask, you must social distance within your unit, but they will be allowed to have 10 people in the building at a time and um, that, but they will not have registration. So good news, um, but also there will be restrictions there as well, right? And we're all gonna be open from one to five. Those are the hours both at Homer Lake and at the museum. Yep. You know, and you know, as you mentioned already, you know, we may, you know, typically in the summer Last summer, we were open every day of the week from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're certainly not doing that to start off now, starting slowly, um, you know, as we do a phased reopening. But as you mentioned already, we may expand to be open more days during the week uh, once we, you know, get through the month of July. We'll, we'll uh, see how it goes and then explore that later, see what happens. Um, okay, uh, anything else, general 
reopening oh, rules or anything? I forgot to also mention that the first for the museum, the first hour of our opening time. So in this case, it would be the first hour of Wednesday from one to whatever um, is for vulnerable populations. So people over 65, people with underlying health conditions, um, you'll still have to wear a mask, but uh, we want to minimize the risk to those people. And, and those are a lot of the people who we see. So we wanna make sure that there is one hour that, that they have, that they, they can feel secure. Cool. I think that's the, I think that's the only thing I did say. I'll think of something else in half an hour, I'm sure. <laughs> I, think, I think we pretty well covered it, but you know, one thing we can do is, you know, I can walk around um, and we can check out the space really quick um, uh, and check out some things that we've added, look at some things that we're planning to work on um, before we reopen next week. But did we're gonna- want, Did you wanna tell people how to register first or did, are you gonna do that after? Sure, I can do that now. I guess that makes more sense. Um, so yeah, how do you register? We're requiring all folks to register ahead of time um, uh, online uh, because we're only allowed because we're allowing a limited capacity of visitors. Just talking points here. A uh, limited limited amount of visitors in the museum, up to ten each time ticket session. So how do you sign up? Well, there's a number of different landing spots you can go to to sign up. Um, this is ccfpd.org, uh, Champaign County Forest Preserve District website. If you scroll down here, once you get right to this homepage, there is this gold bar across the screen that says register and reserve. You click the register and reserve button. It then takes you to this registration portal. And if you click on register for an activity, it will then open up all of these activities that you can register for, including a whole bunch of slots that say, museum ticket registration. So if you wanted to visit us as soon as we open next Wednesday, July 8th, from 1 to 2 p.m., that is what it says right here. That's the slot you want to sign up for. You click on this link here, and it shows you just to verify that this is July 8th. You're looking to visit from 1 to 2 p.m. And we, again, list our guidelines and rules down here below. Uh, for you to review one more time. And if you click add to cart, it will then add your registration to your cart. Then what you need to do is log in if you already have an account with CCFPD program registration or uh, simply create, a, create an account. It doesn't take too much time. Um, we're, we're doing this so we can make sure that we know how many people to expect So because we have certain capacity limitations only allowing 10 people per hour, as I already mentioned. And also this gives us an opportunity to capture basic contact information in the event we do have a COVID-19 outbreak from folks who have visited the museum. So we can then contact you and let you know the next course of action uh, that the public health department recommends. Um, you can also- just, just to break in, sorry. We would actually not be doing the contacting. We would give your name to public health so that that would be that will, everything would be anonymous after that. Right, so right. good it, point. We would, we would give them everybody who had been there that day, not just right. you, right? So, right. It, and that's, it, we're actually obliged to do that, so. Yep. Um, okay, so you could also go to our museumofthegrandprairie.org website. And once you get to the homepage here, this landing spot, it says uh, all museum patrons must register for time tickets prior to entering the museum. Click ticket links at the Google event calendar, Google events calendar to the left to register. So you can also, you'll go to the same spot. It'll get you to the same place. If you click on Wednesday, July 8th, you wanna sign up there. Again, it says all visitors must pre-register and you click on, you wanna sign up for one to 2 p.m. Takes you right back to that same spot um, that we found at ccfpd.org. Um, one last place you can go um, is, this is our Museum of the Grand Prairie Facebook page. Uh, this is the landing spot once you go to our, our Facebook page. If you click over to the events tab here on the left, um, or if you're on your phone, I think the events tab will be closer to the top of the screen. Right when you scroll down at the very top, you see this bright colorful image of our museum building, the beautiful front side of the building. 
with some tickets and it says museum time tickets. You click on here on this Facebook event and it takes you inside this Facebook event. Again, where we provide links to take you right to where you need to sign up for museum time tickets. It takes you all to the same spot. So that's how you sign up um, uh, for visiting the museum. Again, looking for all, all visitors to register ahead of time. Um, Susan said maybe she'll finally be able to see the rest of the women's suffrage exhibit. Yes, uh, you know, now that we reopen next yeah. Wednesday, finally get some folks to see this exhibit since it was only open for about a week um, uh, once we close. That broke us our hearts, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a quick walk around. Feel free to, um, you know, you three help me out in highlighting different things um as we take a quick journey around the museum i know it's 10 30 already i advertise this program to only go until 10 30 so i don't want to take up too much of um uh, everyone's time here so walking around the museum going on a little walk here i'm going to start at the front of the museum uh right when you walk in the front entrance show you what that looks like so here we are at the front entrance of the museum Right, what, um, right where you see when you walk in the front door, um, we have our awesome women's suffrage uh, photo booth over here to the left where you can take your photo in front of the White House, just like the Silent Sentinels did when they protested for suffrage um, in 1917, beginning in 1917. I'm reading off the sign because I totally forgot. Um, hey, Tom, will, that be, will, the, will the photo booth be open? Uh, photo the photo. Booth. Go ahead. You go ahead, Barb. The photo booth will be open. All of the all of the dress up clothes and the signs will be gone, except we're I'm leaving the banners because you can still take a picture without actually touching them. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did have like some hats and stuff hanging up on the pegs here, some beautiful uh, suffragist hats and some signs, but uh, took those out uh, to limit contact. Um, as you walk in too, we said we would, uh, we want folks to use hand sanitizer. Uh, we have just a small sample of the hand sanitizer right here on this table. <laughs> that <laughs> that we'll great. have, we, uh, we've got, we've got much more, don't worry. But here's, here's a couple big bottles to use right when you walk in the front door, as well as these smaller bottles, we're going to place at different spots around the museum, maybe close to some places where you have to touch some things such as like the elevator or other interactive uh, experiences. Okay, so walking inside more. Um, if you visited the museum before, you'll notice that this is uh, new. We've got these plexiglass barriers that the construction department from the Champaign County Forest Preserve District helped us with. Um, and they look great, um, you know, protecting our staff um, from patrons and protecting patrons from staff, uh, creating that clear barrier between um, uh, between folks. Uh, here's our museum store um, that we will have open. We've got a lot of women's suffrage related merchandise, women's rights related merchandise to purchase. Um, a whole bunch of things. This museum store is fully stocked and we would love for you to come in and visit us and purchase some stuff from the museum store. We will uh be requiring you to be sure you're going to purchase something before you touch it obviously um, yeah also there'll be one group in there at a time and every time there's a cash or credit card transaction everything will be sand people's hands will be sanitized and so will the machinery so just so you feel safe that's right thanks barb so here's some more of that plexiglass barrier um, that we have here at the museum front desk. Can you all see okay? Am I yeah, showing it? You're it doing okay? great, you're doing great. That's that's really cool. I haven't seen that finish. That's really great. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really nice. Uh, there's also, a, we have a, a window opening here, a little ledge. It's got a shower curtain set up here to create <laughs> another barrier that you can open and close. Oh, wow. This requires a little ingenuity. <laughs> That's right. All right, so walking around, uh, just walk into the women's suffrage exhibit here. Um, you know, I think, Barb, correct me if I'm wrong, but what's, uh, are we allowing, you know, two groups? Of the two groups? 
space because there's a lot of space to stay six feet apart from one another. We're gonna we're gonna do floor decals in there. You are actually traveling in the correct direction around the room. Um, of course, right now you're going in a circle, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll that'll be one way, and we'll 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 place decals throughout the room to show you which way is the right way, and also to remind you to to socially distance. Um, and there's not a lot of interactives in this exhibit, so there won't be a lot that's gone. That book probably will be gone, um, but that's about it. Uh, the headphone for one of the uh, one of the visual the video displays will be on, and you'll it'll be playing um, fairly constantly. Is that right, Mark? Yep. Yeah. So. Hey Mark, what's uh, what's these uh, sheets over some of the cases and the artifacts in here? What's that for? Yeah, well, since um, no one was in the building, we just wanted to make sure that we kept everything clean um, and protected from light. As you can see on that case right in front of you, uh, especially in the morning, that case gets a little more light than we would like. Um, so. Since we weren't open, we just wanted to make sure that the artifacts were safe. So we just covered up some of those cases uh, as a precautionary measure uh, to protect, protect the objects in the cases. Yep, trying to protect these, these pieces from history. That's, but those, those sheets will be taken off before yep, we be yep, reopen. Yep. All right, so uh, there's a quick walkthrough through the suffrage exhibit, um, as well as this beautiful Beautiful door here that was created by middle school students, uh, Sisterhood Franklin Steam Academy, right, Katie? That's right, yeah. Super great. Maybe they can come back with their families. Yeah, That's I right. sure hope so. Yeah. I want to uh, try to reach out to them and, and um, make a special time for them. Oh, that's a great idea, Barb. I love that. Good idea. I never stop thinking. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so walking over to the Grand Prairie Story exhibit, checking out some things in here. Let me know if you guys want to send me in a special direction to look at something. No, you're, no, you're doing well. This is the direction you would be tra traveling through Grand Prairie Story as well. Um, it's the logical, chronological way to walk through it, but in this case, it's also going to be the COVID-19 way to walk through it. So <laughs> we'll have stickers on the floor here to direct you the correct way and um, and to remind you to social distance. And for uh, now, that button that kids love to push for now will be... Yes, the, all of these things that are, you know, around the room, the skins and the... Pat, Mark, feel free to to hop in here. And the, yeah, uh, so the the push buttons will be covered. <clears throat> uh, the skins will be removed. Uh, basically, anything that's that's tactile, hands on. Unfortunately, that that we can um, realistically remove from the space, we'll try and do that to make sure that everyone is safe. You're doing good, Pat. <laughs> so there was a small room, and this is a, um, no, that's okay. You don't have to go in there. <laughs> and then the blacksmith exhibit is a, is, has got a tiny corridor to get down there. So the, both of those will require only one group in at a time. Yeah. Um, where there's a place in the museum where there's a, a one way and you can't get back out without passing somebody closely, those are places where where you'll be required to to be the only group in it at time. Just like the shop is too small to have more than one group at a time. Go. So, similarly here. Right. So those drawers, Pat, you want to show the drawers? Those all open and there's something wonderful for you to see inside. 
but we would ask that if you wanted to do that, that you would use, there will be hand sanitizer right on top of that surface and you would use hand sanitizer as soon as you were done. Um, uh, handling the drawers or before also, whatever you prefer. Both. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't heard that video on for a while. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Mr. Cool. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith's uh, misses seeing people. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Again, in the in the crane elevator, one group at a time. And will there be hand sanitizer by the wagon interactive as well? Yes. Yeah. We will have multiple spots for hand sanitizer throughout the museum space here. Trying to keep everybody safe. Right. All right. That's great. Grand, that. Grand Prairie Story Exhibit. Let's head downstairs. The, um, the elevator will still be functioning. Um, so if you have mobility issues, the, you can still take the elevator. Um, I don't think we have to run it because it's really loud, guys. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Didn't want me to take a trip in the elevator, huh? I did not. I'll take the stairs. That's all right. Okay. All right. So coming down here, got the lights off to Discovering Home. Discovering Home exhibit going to be closed, as we mentioned earlier that Barb and Mark mentioned. Got closed off. But with still um, have to have access to the elevator. So just this one small wing will be open in Discovering Home. Unfortunately, we have to close off Discovering Home exhibit. Just too much to touch, too much possible contamination. Here we go into the Lincoln exhibit. And look, Mr. Lincoln still has his mask on. What a great hey, guy. Abe. Hey, Abe, I love your mask. <laughs> That's great. And uh, as you can see in here, if you visited the museum before, we've had interactives on this table and in multiple spots throughout, but again, removing those just to limit contact, limit touching in the museum space. We used to have like some food and plates and cups here, but I had to take that out. Fun to see the old place. Hmm. Fun to see it. I mean, I was yeah. just there yesterday, but it's still fun to see it. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, and I've heard people say this before, I miss like it, like the museum has this distinct like wood and almost like school supplies smell to me. Yeah. And I miss that smell. Yeah. Well, Not a bad. Pretty much the same. The clothing has gone from the photo booth uh photo photography studio um we would have lincoln's coat and the photographer's coat and a uh, shawl in case you were a lady and wanted to have your picture taken um so obviously we had to take clothing out you can still take your picture right there still if you'd take like. your picture right yeah and you know for example, we left the table and chairs in because, you know, you can still sit down at the table with your own group and pretend to eat and drink. You just can't, mm -hmm. don't have the, the things to touch. So I think the Guzman Church is pretty clear of um, many issues. Right. I love the Guzman Church. I do too. <laughs> Here's another spot for some 
maybe somewhere in this area hand sanitizer because these can yeah we'll have some hand sanitizer close by there i don't know where precisely but i like that interactive who could vote could you vote for for abraham lincoln <laughs> yeah i like that you and i definitely couldn't <laughs> nope nope <laughs> And most of our relatives wouldn't have been able to had they come in the, those years. Yeah, we weren't here yet, but yeah. My family was, but they weren't here long enough for the for the know nothing party. So it's a great name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have to no, get a mask they, on BF Harris. Their own, was it? I don't remember what their. I think it was. I don't remember what their own name for themselves was. I feel like it was the American Party. Hey, look who there is there. Yay. Yeah. Did, you, did you hear what Pat said? Say that yeah. again, Pat. So we'll have to get a mask on B.F. Harris. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, he, probably think, he, probably, he probably thinks just because he's sitting at, at, on his front porch of his own house, he doesn't need to wear one. But going to have guests next week, B.F. You got to, you know, there's people coming. So. Yeah, because we talk about how Abraham Lincoln visited him so he definitely needs to be wearing his mask yeah but i like how he's outside he's trying to be a little bit more safe took everything out of the tent uh if your your family if the kids in your family or your group want to crawl in there assuming that they've all been together because we're not going to check your addresses when you come in so um they can crawl in the tent but we would ask that you not crawl in the tent with people from other groups. That's and all the stuff is gone from the tent, right? That's yep. a great line. We would ask that you don't crawl in the tent with people from other groups. <laughs> Things I never thought I'd say on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We got to write that down. <laughs> That's going to be gone, isn't it, Pat? Yeah. The yeah, it is. I just didn't hadn't removed it yet because I needed a tool to unwind the wire. So, yep, still a still a work in progress, but there will still be something. On it. Right. We got a week. We got a week. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted folks to know so they'd know what they could expect. Yeah, absolutely. I like how our stairs are fairly wide. You know, it's not like you'd want one family group to go up and the other one to go down, but they're wider than a lot of stairs. Yes, that's true. And so the oh, one other change I probably wish, would like to mention is that we have, I know if you've been to the museum before, you know that there are restrooms in the front hall and restrooms in the, um, in the education center. The, and we're gonna ask guests to use the uh, restrooms in the education center because then we can like localize our cleaning and um, cleaning will be done uh, on, frequently used places every two hours and once a day on less frequently used areas. So that way, yes, and there's hand sanitizer right outside the bathroom. And will those will those drinking fountains be um, oh, turned drink, off or roped off? Drinking fountains are off limits. Um, I don't know that it says it anywhere explicitly, but when we had uh, public health come out and talk to us, she said, no drinking fountains. Right. Anything that somebody could put their mouth up close to is off limits. Right. And obviously you would have to take your mask down to do that, so. He's back. All right, so that's uh, just a quick tour of the place. One other thing, um, the schoolhouse, uh, Hensley Town Hall and schoolhouse is typically open in the summer uh, for people to explore. Doubles as an, um, it's an exhibit and program space, but unfortunately just because we can't, you know, we don't have enough staffing just to have somebody parked out there and watch that place. Um, it's gonna be closed through the summer. So that is unfortunate. But a different exhibit that will be open outside, Vanishing Acts will still be open outside. Yep down yep. in the nature trail yep at the southern end of mayberry gelbin botanical garden along the nature trail vanishing acts trees under threat um focusing on extinct and endangered tree species from around the world that's all outdoors so explore that uh exhibit it was created by the morton arboretum global trees campaign also um 
don't you have a virtual program on the schoolhouses coming up in, coming up in July? We're doing our schoolhouse. And tell them about your other, the, the, the concerts, even if you can only say it vaguely. Um, yeah, so the schoolhouse, even though it's gonna be closed, we're still gonna do summer in the schoolhouse programs every Friday in July, uh, starting one week from this Friday on July 10th. Um, each Friday, we'll have a different subject um, and a different school marm, um, one of three school marms, uh, putting on a 19th century schoolhouse lesson virtually, um, which will, it'll be a video posted on our Facebook and YouTube pages. So check out those every Friday in July. Um, big thank you to Miss Sandy Lou, Miss Judy, and Miss Sandy for helping us out with those programs, our school marms. And then uh, also working to do, even though we weren't able to do a, a summer concert series for the Champaign County Forest Preserve District this summer because concerts are a no-go, looking to do virtual performances. Um, again, in this exhibit right behind me, our newest exhibit, titling the series Soloists for Suffrage, looking to do four virtual solo performances from some local artists happening from uh, July to October on the third Thursday of every month in the evening. So those should be some pretty cool virtual intimate performances with just one performer and myself helping with the live stream and technology um, in the space just to limit contact between performers and staff. And, um, and then, you know, we can't do concerts in person with guests as well. So be on the lookout for more information about that Soloist for Suffrage series. It's gonna be a pretty awesome virtual concert series happening right in this historic exhibit space behind me. So, yeah. um, to, and then of course those will, uh, some of those, the schoolhouse things at least will be on our YouTube channel. Yes. And um, of course it, we would love you to go watch our YouTube channel, which is also part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District's YouTube channel where there are lots of wonderful um, uh, YouTube videos made by our staff at Homer Lake Interpretive Center. Um, and the Interpretive Center, again, will be open from one to five, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with a limit of 10 visitors. We'll be open one to five with uh, pre-registration on Monday, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right? Yep. Anything right. else? That's, that's pretty much it. Anybody got any final words? We missed you and we want you to come back. Tune in tomorrow for uh, from Victory oh, yeah. Gardens to Solidarity Gardens. Mark, you Mark, got anything? Any final words? Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so again, we reopen one week from today, Wednesday, July 8th. Open on a limited basis, Wednesday through Fridays. Um, and you must uh, sign up in advance uh, to come on out, check out our website, Facebook page for more information on how to do so. Thanks to the three of you for joining me. Thanks everybody for joining us who watched the stream, who tuned in and out throughout the period of the stream. Um, and if you got any other questions, feel free to message us, email us, or call us. Be happy to answer them. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Pat. Bye everybody. Until, until next Bye, guys. time.